Hey friends, it's Lisa Mason Ziegler. So tonight I'm here by myself. I don't have a co-host um, and I really wanted to just, we're getting a lot of questions about how the course works, what's it like, um, and they people just don't understand. And I so relate to that because I remember when I took my first online course, I was so nervous, y'all. I can remember I made my sister who works with me stay at work for my first um, live Q&A for my course that I was taking because I was so afraid that I would not be able to connect. So I totally understand, get it, have and have sympathy for people. So that's why I just felt really compelled tonight to come on here and to talk very briefly about how our courses work and then I'm going to take you inside of Dave Dowling's course, um, and we'll watch a portion of one of his sessions. It's my one of my little favorite parts about his analogy about buying daffodil bulbs and the buying the big ones are better. So first, I just want to um, tell you just a little bit about how the courses work. So if you think of it this way, instead of buying a book, you're purchasing an online course, and instead of picking up a book off your shelf, you literally can pick up any device that has internet access. You can log into your online library. Um, you set up the this username and password, you log in and your online library pops up. And that's what we're gonna see when we go into Dave's class. Now, if you have multiple classes from us, as so many people do, when you log into your library, all of your courses are right there together. It is like so super convenient. Not to mention that our course has a phone app that goes with it. Um, and we find that more and more people are watching the courses on their phones and even more so referring back. I mean, how many stories have I been told about people being out in the field planting something, some perennial, some bulb or something, and they pull their phone out and go to Dave's course and the way it's organized, it's just so easy to pinpoint what information you need. Um, so you own that for life. Um, so it's just like the book, but here's the thing that I didn't quite understand about courses. Your course has the realistic or has the opportunity to get richer and better with each passing year. And we've chosen to do that. And that means that we add additional content. Um, sometimes an instructor will add a bonus session, which um, Dave and I both and Jenny, I'm just thinking Dave, Jenny, and I have all done that. Steve and Gretel, I'm certain will for their coming year. Um, and so that means that the course, even though you might have been last year's student or the year before, that still is in your library. Everybody shares the same library. So you all see it. In addition to that, all of our live Q&A sessions. Um, so during school, school is six weeks long. And each week during the live school, after you get your sessions for that week loaded into your library, so let's just say it's Monday morning, you're in my course. Um, actually, it's Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, you log in and there's a whole bunch of new sessions in there. Um, so you have a week to watch as many of those as you want or all of them so that you're ready for our live Q&A together the following Monday night. And that Q&A is also recorded and added into your library. But here's the cool thing, y'all. Like for my course, there's three years previous Q&As in every one of your classes. So that means each year, another Q&A goes in there. And you just can't believe how good the questions are that people ask. Um, so it's like having a whole nother session or well, even more than that because a lot of them are over an hour and um, so that's just another really great asset so I'm sorry y'all I'm trying to look at my notes um, the other thing about the courses so you own it for life it gets richer and richer as long as you can get to internet and log in you can get to your course um, it has a phone app that goes with it. You have lifetime unlimited access. That means that you can watch it as many times as you want. All the resources that are in there. I mean, the wholesale suppliers um, and Dave's course and my course both include Canadian supp suppliers. We've been asked that by so many people in the last two days. We've received emails. I thought I would just mention that. Um, and they, um, all the courses 
during school, that six week period, and I want to say this right now while we're talking about it, one of the reasons, one of the big reasons that we only offer this class once a year or this school is because our instructors are so interactive that it takes a, lot, a big block of time. And that's why it's just offered once a year. We open enrollment for five short days. Um, you enroll, we're done with that part and we move on to getting ready for our students um, because the instructors are so involved. So even beyond the weekly Q&A sessions, um, we provide an optional closed Facebook group. Now, I wanna say that the, the, op, the Q and A sessions are not on Facebook, they're on Zoom, they're on a platform that everybody can have access to. You do not have to be a Facebook user um, to be able to participate. But we also provide an optional Facebook closed student group for each new class of students. And this is a place where amazing things happen, y'all. Um, not only is your instructor in there with you, um, hitting, you know, answering questions and your other students are in there, you're networking and supporting and helping each other. Um, it's really pretty amazing. So about a few weeks after school ends, we actually freeze that group. It's always there that you can go in and look at it, but you can't post anymore because we then put you, the new students, in with the alumni of all the previous years. And y'all, the depth of information and support and mentoring and help going on in these alumni groups is actually phenomenal. Um, like in my group, there's some people that have been in there for four years. Um, so they're like almost what I would call a seasoned farmer, right? Many of them. And they're so helpful to new people. And that's where I do my impromptu videos. So this is inside of Dave's course. So just imagine that you just logged in. You can, you can always find the login on our website, thegardenersworkshop.com, you know, you can bookmark it on your computer or on your, if you're on your phone, we actually have an app um, that is super easy to use. And I will tell you that that's where I watch most of my online courses. Um, and if you bought online courses by other people that used Kajabi, which that's what we use, their core, if you, as long as you use the same email to register, they'll all be in your library together. It is super duper convenient. So this is when you log in, this is what you're gonna see. So I'm just gonna kind of show you a taste of what the, the sessions look like. Um, so you can see here, there's 107 different lessons. Um, and so each, this is, let me bring this up. So this is class one. And there's actually two, the first two classes are on bulbs. So class one is like week one. And all of these individuals are all the different sessions that are in this week. And see where it says, see more right here? That means there's more sessions. So there's even more to be seen past that. Um, and then you have to go to the second page. And so each one of these, and you can see there's two previous classes Q and A's here. Um, and so let's just say this is week one. Oh, we may have to go back one more time. Sorry, y'all. Whoops. Sorry. There we go. So this is, I'm still not back. Wait a minute. Operator error, y'all. Here we go. So this is week one. So the first week of school, you're gonna log in on Friday morning for Dave's course. And all of these sessions are gonna be in your class for you to watch. Then you have a follow-up Q&A the following Thursday. You get it on Friday, you have the weekend. I mean, you can watch them whenever you want, but it is super beneficial to at least skim them if you're busy. So you can see if you have any questions that come to mind. And here is a really great tidbit that um, I share with people. And this is too funny. Um, so our, our um, software actually allows you to either speed the video up or slow it down. And if you've ever been in one of Dave Dowling's course, I mean, the man just oozes so much information. It is sometimes so hard to take it in. 
you can actually slow Dave down. Um, we, most people, I tend to speed people up. I appreciate people that are fast talkers. Um, so you can adjust that. So I would recommend that you kind of skim the courses if you're deep in busyness um, so that you can have questions that you can ask. Here's week two, more bulbs. Then week three starts with perennials, all of these. And you can actually see the syllabus on Dave's sales page and it lists all these. You, this is not anything I'm trying to hide from you. Um, and see, there's already a bonus session there that he did last year when he came here with our hellebores. This is week four, more perennials. Um, and then week five is on shrubs and woodies. And then week six is structures and more. And y'all, Dave is so, Dave grew and sold for a year, for year round markets in Washington, DC, super busy um, farmers markets. So that man pushed all of his houses to the limits. He had a heated house, he had hoop houses. Um, I mean, he is just so experienced in those areas. And this is really a great introduction to that. So I wanted to take you in, I tell you one of the course, one of the sessions that I like is this, this bulb session. And I'm going to start us just a little bit in here. Um, and so these are just some of the kind of Narcissus are grown as a perennial. Tips. They'll come back every year, as long as you're not in a really warm zone. Um, they're deer proof. Uh, deer will not eat them. I've seen them before growing in the middle of a horse field that was all mud and there were daffodils blooming because the horses wouldn't touch the daffodils, but ate everything else in the field. So they are deer proof. Uh, you want to plant them six inches deep in full sun or the shade of deciduous trees. So they get the sun in the spring and then if the shade is later in the summer when they're dormant, it doesn't matter. You want to space them four to six inches apart to allow room for them to multiply because they will multiply. Uh, you plant a bulb this year, in a couple of years, there'll be twice as many bulbs there. Um, so you want to leave room for them to grow and expand. Um, you will need to divide them after about five or six years or once they're crowded. Uh, if you basically end up having a lot of leaves and no flowers, then that means it's time to divide them and spread them out. When it's time to harvest Narcissus, you actually pull them. You don't cut them. Uh, you want to pick them when they're in the bent neck stage, like in the picture, where it's colored up, not open, but the stem is bent over sideways. And when they first come out of the ground, the stem and the flower head point straight up. But as soon as it bends over, like in the picture, then it's ready to harvest. Um, after you pick your flowers, you do not cut back the foliage or the leaves, and you don't tie it up to make it, the garden look tidy. You go ahead and let it just turn brown naturally, and then once you can pull it away, and it's totally dry, you can pull them up and clean up the bed then, but you always wanna let them die back naturally because that's what's regenerating the bulb for next year and creating more bulbs. Um, with Narcissus, the bigger the bulbs, the bigger the profit. Um, if you're selling cut flowers, the more stems you can sell, the more money you can make, the more income. And as an example, if you take a Tahiti bulb and grow a size 12, 14 bulb, that might cost you 35 cents, you're going to get one flower stem out of that. It's only produced one stem of flowers that'll cost you basically 35 cents in bulb cost per stem. If you're a size 14, 16 centimeter bulb, that might cost you 62 cents. You can get two flowers, at least two flowers, and it will be 31 cents per stem is what the bulb costs. And then if you grow a size 16, 18, which might be 72 cents, which is a little more than double the size 12, 14, but you're gonna get three flowers out of it, three times as many flowers for twice the price. So it's basically 24 cents a stem in bulb cost when you buy the larger size 16, 18 bulbs. So another way to look at it is if you're trying to grow 300 stems of Tahiti Narcissus, you plant 300 size 12, 14 bulbs that cost 35 cents each, it's $105 you spend on those bulbs. If you do the size 14, 16 at 62 cents, you're gonna spend $93 and save $12 compared to the size 12, 14s. But if you grow the size 16, 18, you'll need to grow 100 bulbs at 72 cents is $72. So you save $33 if you grow the size 16 compared to size 12s. So if you look at the, the money wise this way on 
300 bulbs this cost you $105. <coughs> but then if you look at the bottom, if you grow the size 16, 18, you only have to plant 100 bulbs compared to 300 bulbs of the size 12, 14 to sell the same amount and make a better profit because you spent less money on the bulbs. So if you can plant 100 bulbs compared to planting 300 bulbs, it's kind of an easy decision to make. Buy the bigger bulb. You don't have to buy as many. You can buy 50 the size hundreds compared to buying 150 the size 12s. So the larger the bulb, the less work you do to plant them and the higher your profit. Narcissus bulbs come in uh, several different flower types. This is what's called the large cup, which is in the picture. There's double, multi-flowered, split crown, and trumpet. Some of the varieties of for cut flowers in the large cup are the accent, gigantic star, Professor Einstein, stainless, and pink charm. Each one's a little bit different, but those are all ones that are good, work well as the cut flower. For the double varieties, they basically have a lot of extra petals on them. Sometimes the petals are all the same color or the same pattern. Like the Ice King, all the petals are about the same. And then Tahiti has a light yellow petal with then shorter dark orange petals in the middle. And then White Lion is more all white with a little bit of yellow. Queen's Day is yellow and orange, uh, lighter orange. And then Replete is kind of a salmony peach color with white outer petals. All very different, but all great cut flowers. And those are all ones that uh, a florist will not be able to get usually from a wholesaler. So they're willing to buy fancy daffodils from a local grower um, as opposed to getting from the wholesaler because the wholesaler rarely would carry these varieties. The multi-flowered ones basically have more than one flower on a stem. Um, you can see in the picture, the cheerfulness has five flowers on one stem, but each flower is much smaller on these uh, multi-flowered compared to the doubles. The flowers themselves are about half the size. We have four or five of them clustered together. The split crown are basically ones that uh, usually two sets of petals, but the, the crown or the cup has been kind of like flattened out and split open. So it's very different, unique look, but also has some great colors, uh, like the apricot world and the pink wonder, uh, kind of unique colors for daffodils. It's not the typical yellow. And speaking of typical yellow, you got Mount Hood and Goblet, which are both, they say, very big yellow flowers. And then Mount Hood is a white and uh, Dutch Master, are, I'm sorry, Yellow River and Dutch Master are the big yellows, and Mount Hood and Goblet have the white. But one word of caution is when you're looking at daffodil colors, um, be careful what you see, because everything on the internet's not true or not real. <laughs> Um, if you look at the picture, that's literally the picture is from five different suppliers of Professor, Professor Einstein. And you can see some are bright, bright reddish orange and some very pale orange. Um, so you got to uh, make sure you look at an accurate picture. Um, and also even just your computer monitor can be different. I know if you have two computers next to each other or your phone or your computer, the colors might be different. Um, but the real Professor Einstein is the one in the bottom center. That's what you're really going to get. Not the bright chartreuse orangey red on the top left. Uh, weed control for Narcissus. So like I said earlier, it's really important not to cut back the foliage to allow it to die back naturally because it's regenerating and uh, getting nourishment back into the bulb to get more bulbs and more flowers for next year. So you can mulch to control the weeds. Uh, a good mulch is the shredded leaves or a good compost that doesn't have weed seeds in it. Another option of weed control is that once the Narcissus leaves have died back and gone dormant in early summer, is to cover that bed with a tarp or weed fabric. Um, you're not going to hurt the Narcissus. The bulbs are down there sleeping for the summer until the uh, next spring. But the tarp or the weed fabric will keep the weeds from growing. But it's important to remove the tarp after hard freeze in the fall. Because if you leave it on there all winter, it's basically uh, solar gain from the hot sun shining on the dark tarp in the middle of winter. So the ground never gets quite as cold as it should. And you might not get enough cold, cold treatment or cooling period for the bulbs. So you just remove the tarp in the fall after a couple of hard freezes or frosts, and then you shouldn't have any problem with weeds over the winter. Um, a couple of things to remember is Narcissus are perennial. So when you plant them, when it leave room, 
for them to expand. So unlike planting tulips where you put them almost touching each other, these want to have them three to four inches apart. So they leaves room for them to multiply. The deer are not going to bother them. So it says if you have a deer problem, this is something you plant out in your field or along in your perennial area without worrying about the deer eating them every year. And you want to pick them at that next stage uh, and sell them at that stage even. Uh, they might open up for you at the market as you deliver the florist, but you want to plan to sell them in the closed stage. The double varieties, you can let them get a little bit more colored, but they should still be closed. And you want to harvest them early in the day. Basically, it's really easy because you're just pulling them. So it doesn't take a bucket, doesn't take a pair of clippers. You just bend over, reach really low, and with your finger and your thumb, just pull straight up. Don't pull at an angle. You want to pull straight up. It should snap off at the soil line, or even better if it snaps off down closer to the bulb, gives you a longer stem. Uh, you want to store them in the cooler, uh, but you want to use something to keep them sliding down in the bucket and getting bent stems. Uh, what works really well is to put a cup or a vase. Uh, if you uh, store them in the vase in the cooler, I used to like to sell them at the farmer's market out of the vase. It just makes them look nicer. Uh, or use rubber bands to hold them together in bunches so they just can't slide down and get the bent stems. Uh, they open up really fast if you take them out of the cooler. Uh, if you have a market that's going to be 65 degrees that day in late March or early April in the early spring, they're going to open up really fast and bloom out and uh, be open by the time you get them to the market. Uh, but this is another one that it's good that if you're picking several different varieties, you keep them separate in separate buckets or separate vases. So that if you have one or two flowers that are open, the customer can see what the closed bud is going to look like when it does open. Um, they do well in a soil pH of six and a half to seven and the grown zone three to eight. Um, you can get programmed or partially cooled narcissus bulbs to plant in like zone nine, but then the following year, they're probably not gonna do that well. So it's more of a, a landscape thing. You wouldn't usually do that as a cut flower because the price of the bulb to get it for just one year, you're not gonna make as much money off of it. So it's more of a zone three to eight crop so that you can plant them every year, plant them one year then harvest every year. Uh, for many, many years. You just have to divide them after five or six years. So that's all for now, and I'll see you in the next class. So folks, that's the kind of information he tells you on over 70 crops. Um, so, and actually it's more than that because he put, we call them the minor bulbs, those are like the smaller, not major bulbs. He has them all grouped into one session. So um, just information that when you're purchasing, what are you going to grow? What size do you get? Where do you get it? It's just priceless information. First off, you know that you can DM me on Instagram. You can messenger me on Facebook. You can send in an e. The, the quickest thing is probably to send an email at info at the gardeners workshop .com. Um, Anne and our team, Anne, Rhonda, Kelly, and Suzanne are quick to answer those e emails. Um, and if not, they'll filter it to the person that can answer it for them. And we just, we're here for you. You know, what can I say? So I am. Um, Till we meet again, friends. Hope to see you in Flower Farming School. Ciao.